So, yeah, moving to the next section is the organizational uh, accomplishment for the 2021. And I'm honored to present the amazing team of the Parkdale Neighborhood Land Trust lead by the Josh. Joshua Brad, Executive Director, Monica Hutton, Asset Manager, Denton uh, Dhogotsang, Office Coordinator, and uh, one and only our James Partin, a Community Development Co Coordinator to present the organizational accomplishment for the, for the 2021. Before I end it up here, I see a Godperk in the, the meeting room and I would like to invite Godperk after the organization presentation done by the amazing team of the PNLT. Thanks so much, Funsak and Anita. Um, first off, I think it's good to uh, basically remind us what a community land trust is. And some of us are very um, comfortable with it, but for others, it's a new concept. A community land trust is a nonprofit organization that owns lands and, and makes sure that it's put to use for community benefit. Um, we define community as, uh, as basically people who live or work in our community, which uh, is a geographic area of Parkdale and a little bit of, of a geography around it. Um, we also focus on securing land. We remove that land from the private real estate market, bring it into community ownership so we can protect that land and assure that it's used to meet community needs. We focus on land for affordable housing and supportive housing, as well as community economic development. And then finally, the CLT is a democratically governed organization. We have a unique board structure that puts community in the decision-making role. Um, and as, as many of you know, we have core members. Those are people who live or work or use the land that we own. So they have a direct interest in that land. We have community members. They're people who live or work in our boundaries, but don't live or work or use the land directly. So they have an interest in the organization continuing to grow and meet other community members' needs. And then we have organizational members. And so rep those are representatives from organizations serving equity-seeking community members in Parkdale. Next slide. Our organization actually is a dual organization. So we have a charity, the Neighborhood Land Trust, and a nonprofit, the Parkdale Neighborhood Land Trust. Today is the AGM of the Parkdale Neighborhood Land Trust. The Parkdale Neighborhood Land Trust is the organization that has the community-based membership that you were all a part of. We have a 15-person board, and just like any land trust, we can own land um, for the, the purposes we set out. In addition, and we've established a non or we've established a charity called the Neighborhood Land Trust. That organization has a membership which includes the board of the Parkdale Neighborhood Land Trust and potentially in the future, the boards of other CLTs that join the Neighborhood Land Trust. Um, we have specific purposes that are charitable, including providing affordable and supportive housing and owning land for community economic development. And so these two organizations work together to serve the community of Parkdale. Next slide. Um, these two organizations uh, have a broad membership. At this point, the PNLT has 885 members. That's of early this week. Uh, that's as of early this week. We have 15 board members in the PNLT, the nonprofit, five board members in the NLT nonprofit, and four full-time staff. Next slide. Um, you know, we have a team and we're building our team so that we can have the capacity to fulfill the goals of our organization and do great work. Um, we have currently have four full-time staff, Tendon, Monica, James, and I. And more, more uh, very recently, we had a staff member leave, Darnell Harris. But Darnell did wonderful work as the operations manager throughout 2022, 2021. Um, so we wanted to recognize his amazing work and thank him for that work. Next slide. We also have amazing board members. Here's a photo of some of our board members. Unfortunately, over the last year, we've had to meet online. And so here's some screenshots of some of the meetings we've been a part of. Next slide. And our work wouldn't be possible without the committees. We have amazing volunteers, community members and supporters who join our work. We have an acquisitions committee, a governance committee, finance committee, a community engagement committee, a resource committee. And did I say governance committee? Yeah. We have all these great committees uh, and they're all led by local residents and supporters who help us get our work done. Thank you to the chairs and the committee members who participated in the last year. Next slide. And so, um, yeah, so our work, as you know, as a land trust, it focuses on acquisition. We wanna move land into community ownership. Our commitment to this started with, uh, started with uh, an event uh, seven years ago 
when there was a mass eviction of tenants at the Queens Hotel, 1521 Queen Street West. And this was the beginning of us realizing that there was a crisis, a crisis of rooming house loss and the loss of other forms of affordable rental housing. We undertook a study, um, the Parked of Rooming House study. And since then, we've been working to preserve affordable housing in our community. Next slide. This year, we were extremely proud to be able to preserve the second rental apartment building that had priorly been at risk. And then we were able to bring it into community ownership to preserve that rental housing as affordable. That was 22 Maynard Avenue. And that project, this acquisition was made possible by investments from a number of value aligned foundations, as well as the community, um, the Van City Community Investment Bank, who helped us to put together an innovative impact investment fund to make that, um, to make that acquisition possible in the absence of public investment. So in, in this, with this project, we were able to preserve 36 units of affordable rental housing, um, which we currently operate. And the photo on the, the top right is a photo of the celebration that we held um, when we had that win. Next slide. Um, and so I'd like to uh, uh, ask Monica and James to um, present this slide and, and talk about the stewardship we're undertaking at 22 Main. Thank you. Just to speak a bit about some of the both short-term <laughs> and long-term uh, planning that's been going on around 22 Maynard over the past um, year in 2021, um, both looking at the short-term improvements to the building that are required. So there were some uh, specific equipment replacements related to the sprinkler system, fire alarm system, and some uh, equipment replacements for hot water tanks. Um, but also thinking about um, the, the open space, there were some community garden beds also added, uh, which allowed the tenants also to participate in the installation and, and set up of those. And then thinking more about the long-term improvements to the building and planning activities around that, um, we've been working with specialists across different disciplines to plan for a retrofit of the building that can also address improvements in areas of accessibility and energy efficiency for the building in the long term, and also opportunities to provide additional affordable housing units for the building. So we're excited about uh, those planning activities moving forward. And I'll invite uh, James to talk about the tenants engagement around those activities as well. Thanks, Monica. And of course, in the spirit of uh, nothing about us without us, uh, because we had all these ambitious uh, long-term improvement plans, one of the, our first priorities, once we had some, some designs uh, that gave us a, a set of different directions we could go, was to, of course, engage with tenants and host a, a, an online Zoom meeting to go over those plans in detail with tenants and get their feedback as to which of the plans um, that, that they preferred. Uh, something interesting did in fact arise from that process and we we recognized that uh, tenant circulation was within the building was really valuable to the people who lived in the building and that wasn't something that had necessarily come out in our own initial designs and that uh, did definitely contribute to our making the decision we did in terms of which of the options we follow moving forward also something very important to mention is that um, we we did receive a very generous donation and, um, and uh, that donation has enabled us to create a rent relief program. We've had the rent relief program in operation now for a couple of months. 32,000 uh, was donated to support the rent relief program throughout the year of uh, 2022. And we've already helped six different people um, be able to pay their rent uh, in this building on account of that very generous donation. Um, I think that's all for this slide and we can move on. Yeah, so um, thanks so much. And so the big news this year, you know, I, 22 Maynard was an amazing accomplishment, um, but the, the, the biggest news is that we were able to announce that we will be bringing 81 homes and small buildings into community ownership in the neighborhood land trust this year. And um, this is through a transfer of property from Toronto Community Housing to the land trust so that we can preserve this housing as affordable housing. Um, and so we've partnered with the YWCA Toronto, who will be the housing, social housing operator, and will provide improved tenant-focused tenant, uh, tenant -focused property management and services. Uh, we're really excited that this, uh, this project allows, uh, provides for housing security for the existing tenants. They can stay and their rents will retain, remain affordable. 
In addition, we're going to be providing permanently affordable housing in these units. Most of the units will be deeply affordable with rent geared to income, uh, and all units will be no more than 90% of average market rent. In addition, um, we are, we're, we're working towards gender equity, and 100% of the new tenants who move into vacant units will be woman-led households, who are also um, who are, and these will also be people who are waiting for affordable housing on the City of Toronto's centralized waiting list. As many of you know, that centralized waiting list has way too many people on it. So we're very proud to be able to um, be able to help um, people who have been waiting for affordable housing for much too long to get access to good quality housing. Uh, another thing to say is that these houses are actually mostly um, family size units, three to five bedroom um, homes with front yards and backyards um, or porches, et cetera. And so this is a very unique housing uh, type of housing that we're very proud to be able to steward moving forward. Next slide. Monica? Thanks, Joshua. Um, yeah, and as was mentioned, uh, the, the housing is, uh, a large portion of it is single family homes. There are also uh, variations in the, in the type of buildings that are included and also in their current condition. Um, that being said, there's common goals around addressing all of the, the buildings and that's uh, focusing attention on bringing all of the properties into a good condition, addressing critical life safety issues and ensuring that any vacant buildings that are coming into the stewardship of the land trust are brought to a condition that they can all be tenanted. And also with that, thinking about other goals and targets around energy efficiency. So looking across the portfolio, we've been able to target approximately 40% in energy consumption reductions and 45% in emissions reductions over a five-year plan. And also looking at accessibility improvements that can be adopted across the, the portfolio of buildings. So for the process of developing that planning uh, over the past year, we uh, conducted inspections of all of the, the 81 buildings with some specialists that were able to join our team and um, also completed 20 energy audits for the energy efficiency goals and planning. And also completed a accessibility review with a consultant that was brought on that all kind of worked together through these capital planning activities. Next slide. Um, so that all went into planning for a five-year capital renewal plan for the buildings. So looking at uh, different repairs at different scales that can meet the needs of the different uh, buildings across a uh, five-year plan. So from later in 2022 to early 2027. Um, and looking across the five years, it's projected that 21 million of total expenditures would be across the 81 properties. So it also um, creates a really important opportunity for social procurement and employment opportunities. So looking for when we can be working with so social contractors, local businesses, and also thinking about um, training opportunities that come out of that work. And I'll pass it over to James to talk a bit more about the tenant engagement on that as well. And of course, uh, same uh, with all of our, our projects, tenant engagement is very important. And we have created a tenants advisory committee to specifically uh, provide feedback about the entire process, uh, right from the acquisition process and how communications to tenants uh, can best be accomplished, straight on through to commenting on our capital plans and operational plans as well. That advisory committee has already met at least once, Another of the important goals that we have for that committee is to hopefully engage them um, in the, the neighborhoods that are not Parkdale, the annex, the junction and so forth, and help to create energy around creating sister neighborhood-based land trusts, uh, sort of to, to join in with the Parkdale Neighborhood Land Trust uh, under the uh, NLT umbrella. So, uh, you know, we've had great successes this year. We've also had some projects that haven't moved forward. And that's pretty normal in our history. Before we acquired our first uh, rooming house uh, in 2019, we had we had tried to acquire you know over a dozen others and, and not been successful. Uh, we we learned by doing here in the land trust. 
So this year we also attempted to um, undertake our first new development project. We had um, uh, negotiated to purchase a property at 1488 Queen Street West, uh, where we, we, we had hoped to build 50 units uh, of, of, of new affordable rental housing for women, with 50% of, uh, of those units being uh, for black women. We had the YWCA Toronto as a, as a preliminary housing partner. We intended to build that building in mass timber, which is a, a new uh, technique, building technique. And we were really, uh, really excited to be building new accessible units in the community because we know a lot of the existing housing stock um, has challenges when it comes to accessibility. Unfortunately, our funding proposal to make this project possible was denied by uh, CMHC, which is the federal government's um, funder for affordable housing. And so we were not able to proceed with that project. However, uh, we did learn a lot through the process of planning and working on this project. And we are committed to continuing to build our capacity to be able to build new affordable housing in Parkdale. Um, yeah, next slide. So uh, last few updates. Um, we, we've, you know, throughout our history, we've worked on policy uh, back in 2020. Um, through the amazing work of Melissa Goldstein, we published uh, the Fixing the Leaky Bucket Report, which is a comprehensive policy and, and program framework a proposal um, that would help to preserve Toronto's supply of deeply affordable housing. And it focused on dwelling rooms and rooming houses, these deeply affordable rental units. In that, in that report, we proposed a number of policies that we're really delighted to see that the City of Toronto has, has moved forward. So next slide. Um, the dwelling room protection policy was initially passed by council in 2019. Um, so in, East, in, in recent years, there has been an increase in the amount of dwelling rooms that are being lost due to development. Um, and so official plan amendment 453 uh, contains policies to address the loss of dwelling rooms due to redevelopment and address the displacement of tenants who rent those dwelling rooms. And so um, this policy was passed in 2019, but it was appealed by a number of developers. Uh, amazingly, um, that appeal process has, has come to an end and, and the policy is now uh, in force. Um, so this policy, which the Parkdale community advocated for, um, has been taken up by the City of Toronto to the benefit of residents. Next slide. In addition, in that, in that prior report, we, we had recommended that the City create an acquisition program. And so um, we're delighted that through the you know, hard advocacy of Gord Perks and other councillors, um, that we now have a multi-unit residential acquisition program, which is called MURA for short. So MURA will provide dedicated funding to facilitate the pur purchase and conversion of at-risk private rental housing to create permanently affordable homes owned by nonprofit and Indigenous organizations, in key, including community land trusts. Um, this program will prevent evictions and also help to improve housing conditions in the housing that is acquired. So far, there's been $10 million um, provided this program for 2021 and then another 10 million for 2022. It's a good start, but we need to keep putting pressure on the city to, to further fund this program. But this is a huge win because it's going to hope, hopefully help communities across Toronto implement similar projects as we've been able to implement here in Parkdale. Next slide. Um, none of this would have been possible without supporters. We have value aligned funders and investors. Here are just some of our main funders and investors in the last few years. Um, so we wanted to thank all of these funders and investors for supporting our work, both through grants, donations, as well as investments. And then of course the banks who uh, provide mortgages to help us make the affordable housing projects work. Thank you all for your uh, trust in us and investment in our community. Next slide. Okay, uh, before we move to the, the nomination, uh, I see uh, Godberg, our city councillor, and Putila Karpa, chair of our member of provincial parliament, is in the house. So may I please request both, uh, first with the Godbergs to make some comments with the, our, the, the, the report and presentation. Godberg, please, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, can I just start off by saying how wonderful it is to be here? I, I remember the the early first meetings when we were uh, talking about having a land trust based in Parkdale. And it's just, it, it makes my heart glow to see uh, you guys up running, owning properties, supporting tenants, acquiring new properties. It's just fantastic news. I wanted to give you a couple of quick updates on some of the things we've been working on together. 
Um, Josh just told you a little bit about the acquisition program. I wanted to let you know that uh, uh, Anna Bailao and I uh, felt that it wasn't good enough what they had put in uh, in the budget. So we got some changes to it that make it really exciting. We got uh, on top of the original $10 million, an additional $10 million added for, for 2022. We also, and I designed this, uh, created a reserve fund uh, with a proposal that $10 million minimum go into that every year so that we can grow the capacity of it. Now, council can overturn it in some future year, but uh, it looks like we now have a permanent and permanently growing uh, social acquisition fund in the city of Toronto. On top of that, uh, there have been a couple of property sales recently where a portion of the property sales was added to the Mira account. I don't have a dollar figure on that. Another piece of news I wanted to share with you, uh, the, uh, as you know, we've been doing work on the Parkdale hub and many of the people on, in this meeting and the, and the PNLT and other Parkdale organizations we're advocating that it should be larger than it was. Uh, as of uh, beginning of January, the city took the decision to expropriate the Dollarama site to add it to the Parkdale hub for an additional six story, six and a bit actually building, which will principally uh, be housing. Um, Josh mentioned the uh, dwelling room bylaw. Uh, Additionally, uh, within a month, I believe, uh, the long effort for the city to acquire 11 Brock and get it uh, started as social housing in some form uh, will culminate in an RFP being put out for any interested bidders uh, who want to create social housing on that site. Um, we have got approvals to start the uh, modular housing on the UHN site. And within a few months, we will start a secondary plan for the whole area to create even more housing there. Uh, two pieces of bad news, an effort that we worked on collectively, all of us, uh, to get a, a rooming houses legalized citywide. Uh, we fell one vote short, so it got deferred. Um, but there is a hope we can bring it back, uh, possibly for one of our last council meetings of this term, either June or July. I'm still working on that. I'll let you know when it's time to start yelling and screaming and, and lobbying. Um, the other piece of bad news during this year's budget, I tried to get 1%, one percent, one less than 1% of the police budget uh, taken from the police and put into additional rent supplements. That $10 million would have, would have allowed us to house an additional thousand people who are currently homeless or in our shelter system. Um, what's important there, and I think this is important for PNLT to, to think about doing some advocacy on, is that the current rent supplements and the current amount of Ontario Works or Ontario Disability Support Programs are not enough money to rent units in the city of Toronto market. And by adding money to those rent supplements, we, we allow them to, to actually pay uh, real rents in the city of Toronto. But additionally, and I think this is why you should turn your minds to it, we make the argument that the amount of money for people in social assistance paying rent should be increased, that could be a benefit to land trusts and social housing providers. So there's my quick update. Uh, thank you, Goldberg, for the amazing news and update on Mora. Yeah, so definitely we need your leadership and we we'll always look for you. Thank you so much for your time here and your comments. Next, I would like to request Puti Lakarpo Chair, our member of provincial parliament to make, uh, so make some comments. Thank you, Puti Lakarpo, please. Thank you, Bunzula. Good evening, friends. Uh, it's really so wonderful to be here this evening with all of you again, uh, this time for your AGM. 
And my goodness, what a year PNLT has had. Uh, you know, over the years, uh, you have made great strides to preserve affordable housing in our community. And this work, all based on community ownership and community benefits. I mean, your amazing campaign, uh, Land Held Together to Acquire and Maintain Affordable Housing that is permanently community owned will not only help to diversify the housing, but also to solidify this model of community ownership of land, of homes, and to ensure that our community benefits from affordable housing forever. Imagine that, the, the stress of not having, uh, you know, the fear of massive rent hikes or the threat of eviction. Imagine that gone away, you know, the, the, the peace, the health and well-being that, you know, it, that it promotes in not just the people who have directly benefited, but to the community as a whole. And then, you know, PNLT goes on to acquire another 36 at uh, risk affordable units at 22 Maynard, and that is also under community ownership and is going to be operated, uh, you know, specifically to ensure that this rooming house model, which so many uh, of our community me members who are made vulnerable rely on is protected. And that's also such a huge win for our community. I was very excited when I learned and uh, you know, saw the transfer of all of the units, I think like 153 units to the neighborhood land trust in partnership with the YWC and the city of Toronto. And again, this project you know, is protecting such a unique group of homes as affordable housing. And you know, of course, it'll do all the things that Monica just mentioned, but more than that, I think that it really demonstrates the potential of community land trust. This model works and we know it. Neighborhoods, other neighborhoods across the city and other cities are paying attention. And you know, really all of the work that you're doing when you really think about it in the big picture sense, you are helping redefine how we think about land use in our cities, how we should leverage land to keep communities strong. I think it's really pioneering work that you're doing right here in our community. We're leading the charge, you are leading the charge, and it's something so, it's something to be really proud of. Um, as Gord mentioned, you know, I remember the early years, uh, but it's also amazing to see how much that the PNLT group, our community has achieved in the last few years. Of course, this is thanks to the dedication and hard work of all of you, the board members, the incredible staff, but it is also possible because really we believed that we can do things differently and we will do things differently. And this is really, you know, the thing that is guiding all of the work. And I couldn't be so I couldn't be prouder really to have such an incredible community, incredible neighbors, incredible organizations like NLT and PNLT, technically two now, <laughs> uh, to, you know, uh, as part of Parkdale Hyde Park, a community that I have the privilege of uh, representing at the provincial level. So thank you so much. Um, you will always have, uh, you know, a huge supporter in me. Unfortunately, we are working uh, with a majority forward conservative government. Uh, and so there's a bit of restriction in terms of what is possible only because they haven't yet understood uh, and have their priorities wrong. But hopefully things will change very soon, 10 weeks or hundred days. <laughs> uh, but I just wanna say thank you again for all of your work. It's just so inspiring. Uh, thank you so much, Pujila, for your amazing remarks on the, the work done by the PNL team thus far. And as, as I requested to Goldberg before, we look forward for your leadership in supporting us and being a role model for the rest of the neighborhood, you know. So I really, really thank you and Goldberg for your time and giving us a feedback. And we look forward for, to your continuous, your leadership in becoming a role model for the rest of the neighborhood. Thank you so much. And I'll pass the floor to Anita now. Thank you.